Alright, The Nun has been released, and in this episode, I'm going to mostly compare it to The Nun in The Conjuring 2, so we can find out which movie did a better job at portraying this horrifying character. Let the battle commence. The story for The Conjuring 2 is that the Hodgson family move into a house in Enfield. It just so happens that the previous owner of the house was an old man called Bill Wilkins who died in his armchair. The family soon realise that the ghost of Bill Wilkins inhabits this house and as well as haunting them, he has cunningly decided to possess one of them. They take some outside advice and decide to contact the Warrens. Meanwhile, the Warrens are going about their lives and Lorraine mysteriously starts to have visions of a nun. She soon realises that Ed is also having visions of it. So she pleads to him that they should stop investigating any more supernatural occurrences as she feels her visions are warnings that if they continue, Ed will die. He says that they should help the Hodgson family regardless, but ultimately decides to compromise and agrees that they will only spectate and involve the church if things get too dangerous. From here, the Warrens investigate the Hodgson family, and the longer they stay, the closer the nun gets to killing Ed Warren. That is quite an impressive and layered story for what is essentially a haunted house horror movie, isn't it? Now it's the nun's turn. The story for the nun is that a priest and sister Irene are sent by the Vatican to investigate the suicidal death of a nun. Once they're there, they start to get haunted by the evil spirit, Valak, which they intend to stop and banish back from where it came from. And that's it, there's your story. Now the movie tries to explain the origin of how Valak came to be and is pretty much exactly what you think it is. So if one of the things you are most looking forward to is finding out where Valak came from, you'll be very disappointed. Now aside from the basic premise, the main problem with the story is that it has pacing issues and the way in which it unravels its plot points is not the least bit interesting. Not to mention that anytime the movie tries to give us exposition about Valak and the demonic evil forces of our world, it is super rushed and feels very sloppy. And honestly, this is quite disappointing, as the Conjuring movies and spin-offs usually do a good job at incorporating exposition of whatever evil the movies are focusing on. But this one is probably the worst of them all. I'd even say it's worse than the first Annabelle. Now the way the nun ties itself into the Conjuring universe, however, is a completely different story. It was so good and really clever. I honestly thought it was going to suck, but no, they did an amazing job. And in turn, it surprisingly made the Conjuring movies a little better. And I have always said that that is a good sign of a sequel, and the movie definitely deserves some props for that. However, it does bring to light a plot hole that The Conjuring 2 did a good job of covering up. I wish I could tell you what it is, but it does require me to delve into some spoilers, and I won't be doing that in this video. I'll just say that I never noticed this plot hole in The Conjuring 2, but The Nun actually brings attention to it. There is also a plot hole regarding some of the visions that our main character has, and it does bring the overall story into question. So the story for The Nun is a scattered mess. Given the appalling structure, it could have been worse if the story had more going on, but thankfully, it didn't go to that level of awfulness. So with regards to story, The Conjuring 2 brilliantly continues from what it set up in the first movie, and it also has great pacing which delivers plenty of character development, as well as the essential scares that you would expect from a horror movie. So the movie with the superior story is The Conjuring 2. The Conjuring 2 has a lot of characters, and they are all really well developed. The kids act like real kids, and you pretty much feel protective over them from the very beginning, seeing how young they are. Especially this little kid. His age and underdeveloped speech reminds me of my little brother when he was a lot younger. And even if you disregard the family, the Warrens, played by Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga, are both really likeable protagonists. The director, James Wan, does a great job at illustrating their husband and wife dynamic, and as a viewer, you genuinely care for them. And seeing that these two are supposed to be experts on ghosts and supernatural occurrences, it makes the movie all the more intense when you realise that even they get outpowered and scared by the ghosts. And that adds to the scare factor of the nun, but we'll get to that in a minute. Now, do I have any complaints with these characters? Well, no, I don't. Whenever I watch these two on screen, there is not a single moment that I get bored or even irritated by them. Even when Patrick Wilson plays his guitar and sings, I would usually look at this as a corny moment, and it is, but I don't mind it at all. It nicely balances out the scary moments with some nice uplifting moments. Moving on to the characters from The Nun, we have three. We have a priest, Frenchie, and sister Irene, who is played by Vera Farmiga's younger sister. Now this is usually the part where I talk about my favourite and least favourite qualities of these characters, but unfortunately, I don't have anything to say about them. I don't blame the actors, they are clearly doing the best they can with the very little they have been given. That being said, 
the priest I can only describe as an idiot, for reasons which I will explain shortly, Frenchie is the helpful comic relief, and Sister Irene, she is our main character who the nun takes the most interest in, and that's it. We get a sense of what Irene's character is like at the beginning of the movie when she's talking to some kids, but after that, she is just interacting with the other two and you don't really get much of a personality from her. They all talk about the impending evil and how strong it is, but they don't really have any quiet or personal moments. As a result, the characters don't really bond and get close to one another, and we as an audience don't feel close to them either. They are really just some standard two-dimensional characters that you throw into a standard horror movie, and as far as those types of characters go, these aren't the worst, but I never really cared for them. I did on a very basic level as they are nice people, but other than that, I really couldn't care less. All the other movies in the Conjuring universe, even the bad ones, at least made an attempt to make you care for the characters, and most of them succeeded, but in The Nun, they are just there. It also doesn't help that the characters make stupid choices. They just follow noises and investigate strange sightings. Now the characters in The Conjuring 2 do it as well, but they usually follow something very subtle, like a toy car, or they'll look for a remote, or the rest of the times it's a member of their family who will get possessed or something. In this movie, however, we see a priest follow the ghost of a dead child that he failed to save years ago. I mean, common sense would tell you that you shouldn't follow it, especially to a graveyard at the dead of night. And to make things even worse, during the final act of the movie, the characters split up for no reason. And at this point, they are fully aware that the nun usually picks them off when they're on their own. See, it's when they do stuff like that that you can't root for characters like this as they are practically asking to get killed. And as a result, I am going to completely forget about these characters very quickly, whereas the characters in The Conjuring 2, I still remember fondly to this day. So, yeah, the movie with the superior characters is The Conjuring 2. Now, The Nun was introduced in The Conjuring 2, and it started as a creepy visual in the mirror. Then, it continued as a creepy visual in the hallway, and after that, it gave us a really well done horror sequence which introduced us to how it can scare and harm our main characters, as well as its agenda. And as the movie went on, it was presented in one horrifying sequence after the other. And visually, it was great. 99% of the time it was a woman in makeup, and the other 1% it was made entirely of CGI. And throughout the movie, it played a big part in the story, and the very effective ways in which it was utilised in the horror sequences made it a surprise standout. It got taken out too easily, and to this day, that is something I am still criticising The Conjuring 2 for, but overall, The Nun left a really solid impact, hence it got a standalone movie. And that poses the big question, did The Nun deliver the scares in its own movie? Well, first of all, one of the most disappointing things about it is that we don't see much of the nun. When we do see it, 90% of the time it was just crappy CGI, as opposed to The Conjuring, where 99% of it was a practical effect. And that really is a shame, because the nun makeup looks even better in here than it did in The Conjuring 2, but they only really used her practically in several shots like this, and the last five minutes of the climax. Now we will talk about the climax in a minute, but as for the rest of the scares placed throughout the movie, the best way I can sum them up is that the idea and setup behind them was good, but the execution was a letdown. Now there are also times where it tries to reference and incorporate scares from The Conjuring, such as these two, and the idea is good as it combines the two scares together, but the payoff is not scary, and it just comes off as an inferior version of what we have seen in The Conjuring 2. So again, the idea and setup is good, but the execution is completely lacklustre. Now The Nun does have a bunch of original scares too, such as the entire scene with the group of nuns that walk into the room. The whole setup for this scene is great, and the payoff is really good too. And then the climax happens, and it consists of some great scares, and the tension is very high as well. Even the original Nun music makes a great return. So the climax of the movie did do a very good job with regards to horror. But as good as the climax was, it still wasn't able to match the quality and memorable scares that the Nun provided in The Conjuring 2. 
The rest of the horror in The Nun is just standard and pretty stupid. We constantly see a little ghost boy which is used as a plot point for the priest, but it's still a boy ghost in a horror movie. It's a cliche. If it did something smart with it, like what James Wan usually does with these old horror tropes, then I'd be fine with it. And I would actually commend the movie for breathing new life into these exhausted scares, but it doesn't do that with the ghost kid and that makes it feel like an old and dated addition that the movie could have done without. And although the final act of the film is where all the good stuff happens, that doesn't hide the fact that the first half of the movie is a constant disappointment as the horror keeps on giving you these great setups but ends up being underwhelming. And this happens so many times. But if you're willing to stick through it, you do get rewarded with some decent horror in the end. And hey, remember, what doesn't scare me just might scare you and vice versa. But in stark contrast, it pales in comparison to the horror in The Conjuring 2. The horror in The Conjuring 2 consists of a wide variety of setups, all of which do a great job and leave you itching to see what happens next. And a large part of that is down to the fact that, as I said, you care for these characters and you want to see them come out of this alive. And the way in which we are shown these horrifying ghosts is all done in such a unique and really well-directed style with top-notch cinematography. The creativity is always on screen and it never utilizes a horror cliche in a dated and mundane fashion. It always applies some sort of creative twist to it, and that is one of the things that makes The Conjuring the success that it is. It's time for the scores. The Conjuring 2 gets a very strong 8 out of 10, and The Nun gets a 5. The Nun was definitely a lot better than I thought it was going to be, but its quality really does fluctuate, and the same goes for the headache inducing sound effects. If it was a non-stop thrill ride from beginning to end with a few well thought out character moments then I would have given it a higher score. That being said, it is leaps and bounds better than a lot of other horror movies we have been getting this year, but when compared to movies like Annabelle Creation and The Conjuring films, it doesn't meet their level of quality at all. Look, I appreciate the fact that Warner Brothers are consistently releasing R-rated horror movies, as opposed to Universal who are greedily trying to release a bunch of PG-13 horror-ish action movies. But Warner Brothers really need to be more strategic when constructing these horror films. They've got great horror characters, fantastic sets, and great environmental setups to produce some amazing horror films. But they need to pick better directors that have a drive and a passion to make new and refreshing scares. They should try to look for the next James Wan or David Sandberg, but so far, they have given two of these projects, one of which to the guy who directed only one movie his whole life, and the other to the guy who directed Mortal Kombat Annihilation. If they be more selective with who they hire to helm these movies, then they will undoubtedly have one of the best received and most financially successful horror franchises of all time. <laughs> so, that's it for another Versus video. If you guys liked it, please give the video a thumbs up as it really, really does help. And if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Also, don't forget to share this video as well so more people will be aware of the show and hopefully get thrown off by that ending. As always, thank you very much for watching another Versus video, guys, and I will catch all of you next time. Take care. <laughs>